Just another crazy fact about shooting slow-mo. Wow, I really can't talk. Let's check out that footage. The obsessive TP. So when Team Edge asked us to capture some slow motion footage with our Raptor. Hey, do you guys remember this dude? Hey. I was stoked because we've had this camera since December of last year, shot a ton of commercials on it, like 35 commercials on it, but we haven't yet tested out the slow motion capabilities of it. And that's one of the biggest upgrades from their last camera line, the DSMC2 line, the DSMC2 camera line. The fastest that could go, or the slowest that could go, was 300 frames per second. This thing can go 600 frames per second at 2K. There's a couple downsides to shooting slow motion on this camera. This camera is actually a cinema camera. Uh, it's most used for Netflix shows. Tons of TV shows have shot with this camera, tons of movies, and that's usually what it's used for. The slow motion capability is kind of an add-on, kind of a secondary use for this camera, because if you really want to do like real slow motion, like 1,000 frames per second, you would just get a Phantom. That makes the most sense, because that camera is designed for that type of shooting. This camera is first designed for cinematic shooting, mostly 2398, 24 frames per second. Um, but because the processor is so good on it, it can also shoot really good slow motion. And they doubled the frame rate from the previous line, which is pretty cool because the other one was already at 300 frames per second, which is pretty good. 600 is awesome. So the downsides of shooting slow motion with this camera are you can only shoot in 2K. And then it goes even further. If you, you only shoot in 2K widescreen. So if you shoot in just normal 2K, 1920 by 1080 with this camera, I think you're stuck at 480 frames per second. But if you wanna do the full 600, you not only have to shoot 2K, but you have to crop it. You have to make it widescreen so the top and the bottom aren't, the top and the bottom will be black. And that's just, that's just a processor issue. That's just, this camera can only process things so fast. So when you shorten the top and the bottom of the frame, you actually have less pixels to work with. So that's how we can get all the way up to 600 frames per second. And when you're shooting 2K with this camera, you're actually only using about this much of the sensor. So normally on a lens, right? Let's say your lens is here, you're using the full lens, right? The full sensor is being used. When you're shooting 2K, you actually have to crop the sensor down. So you're only gonna be shooting this little part of the lens now. And not all lenses are super sharp. So a downside you're gonna see while shooting 2K with this camera, by using slow motion, is that it's gonna be a little less sharp, a little more blurry because your lens is only so sharp at that tiny little crop. Using the whole lens, it looks good and sharp all the time. But now we're only using a little, little piece of glass, little sliver of glass that it wasn't really designed to use that little sliver of glass. So it's not as clear of an image. Also, you need a lot of light, okay? You're shooting at 600 frames per second. That means you're at 12, a shutter speed of 1200, of one over 1200. I'm right now one over 50. Let's see what happens if I go to one over 1200. All right, so we got a lot darker in here and definitely underexposed. So the way you compensate for that is you raise ISO. So let's do that. So I have to go to 12,000 ISO and it's still kind of dark. 12,800 ISO. That's great, really? At a shutter speed of one over 1200. It looks pretty clean on my tiny image, but I'm sure there's a lot more green that you guys are seeing. So that's what you have to do. Let's change it back. <laughs> so that's what you have to do to use any slow motion camera, because you want that normal motion blur. If you don't have your shutter speed at double the frame rate, then you're not gonna have normal motion blur like this. You're gonna have some jittering stuff. You're gonna have some weird, like time lapsey. Just, it's gonna look bad. Always make your shutter speed double your frame rate. And when you do that, when you're at 600 frames per second, you need a lot of light. So thankfully, last year, I actually helped Team Edge build a lighting grid where we have 10 Aperture 300Ds. So we're able to shoot a lot of light on our set. It still looks pretty dark though. I think I had to go to 1600 ISO, which is not ideal for this camera. So it's a little dark, but the footage still looks pretty good for, for what it is. Uh, best case scenario, when you're shooting slow motion, you shoot outside, because it's so much easier to get all that light, because you got the sun, you got a way brighter source. But if you are shooting inside, make sure your lights are close to your action, and just make sure you have a lot of light. 
So they got to blow up a bunch of stuff. It was really cool. Let's check out that footage. I just noticed one more crazy thing here while reviewing the footage. We recorded in these short little bursts on the day because it can eat up a lot of footage when you're shooting 600 frames per second. That's 25 times more frames per second than shooting at a normal 24 frames per second. I think I have that math right. Correct me if I'm wrong. So when you play back your 600 frames per second at 24 frames, you're spreading out those 600 frames. It takes 25 times longer to play back what you recorded. Most of these clips are like two minutes here, like five minutes, two minutes. But really, we only recorded about five to 10 seconds because that's all it takes to see a crossbow blow something up. When we record about 10 seconds, you get like two to three minutes that it actually takes to play that back shooting at 600 frames per second. Just another crazy fact about shooting slow-mo. Hope that was fun. Really cool to see what this camera could do. Stay possessed.